need to put this on my podcast. So let me get my podcast set up here. So, okay. So I like to put my stuff on the podcast so it always be a recollection of what I said. Okay, so uh, Matthew 6 and 24. I I need to um from an apostolic perspective and from um a teacher in the gospel I got several different roles at the Lord out of the fivefold ministry, you know I've been touched by all of them to be able to operate in, so um I I just I want to make sure that I reiterate this so that you understand and know what's going on Matthew six and twenty four I need to delve into this this morning I'm gonna be doing some more extensive. I'm teaching on it. I may mess with it tomorrow. It all depends on how the Lord lead me concerning things. But it says right here, Matthew 6 and 24, no man can serve two masters. Now, I want y'all to understand this and see this. It says two masters. First thing I need you to understand is, let's, let's, let's go into this. No man. So when it says no man, that's talking in reference to who? Y'all can talk back to me. It's talking in reference to when it says no man, what is that in relation to? Oh, human being. Human being, that's right. No man, no man. So that means us. So no man can serve. It uses the word serve. What does it mean when it's talking about serving? Come on, y'all, smart. Worship and honor. Mm-hmm. I want you to think about it at a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, what do they do? They serve you service. And so what are they doing when they serve you? What are they doing? They're waiting. They're waiting they on you. They honor waiting. They waiting on us. They're waiting on you. So that means you literally become someone that they are worshiping. You understand? Because they're catering to you. That's right. They're catering to you. So that means that they have, um, Antoinette says she's muted or something. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to do with that. So, um, hold on. Hold on a second. I, I don't have, I didn't start the meeting, so I can't do nothing. I unmuted everyone. You have to unmute yourself, or however. Um, that's what they're saying now. I don't know. You may have to just try to unmute yourself. I don't. I don't know. Um, so listen, and this is very prophetic today, y'all. I know I can't be distracted. You're gonna have to. You know, y'all gonna have to work it out yourselves. Let me do what I need to do. You know, um, because this is very. Um, it says it's muted by the host. I'm not the host. So, but this is the thing. I need y'all to please hear me because this is a prophetic a word and it is a, a word of preparation for where we are and where we are going. Okay. It says no man can serve. Serve, it means like, like exactly what we said to cater to, to worship, to submit to, to become under. So it says no man can serve two masters. So that means that the battle is between how many people? It's between two, how many entities? Two. Two. Two masters. Notice the word masters. When you think of the word master, what comes to your mind? Slave or the person that you're employed by. Not, yeah, you say enslaved, but that is the person that the master is over. I'm talking about master when you say, tell me what comes to your mind with master. What is the position of the master? The head of the... He holds everything. Okay. He's a higher person. Holds everything. What did you One say? One that has Ma- authority over you. One that has authority over you. Sharika, you said what? Um, that's what you said. Okay. you serve. Okay. All right, so that's why I need y'all to, I I got y'all got to get this. I got to get y'all, I'm telling you, I got something going on in my spirit. I can't, I can't hold it. I'm telling you, I got to get y'all, y'all got to get this because we can't miss this. No man can serve two masters. We eating this thing, breaking this thing down. No man, meaning reference to us. 
can serve, which means can, to worship, to submit to, to come under two masters, meaning that there is a battle between two entities. Masters mean that these, these people are in lordship. They're in authority. So no man can have two different people in authority. It's not going to be, it's not, it's not going to be. Okay, so let's go further. It says for either, which means a a choice, a choice, okay? There is a choice for either he, meaning who? The man, the woman. Either he will hate the one, hate the one and love the other. So check this out. Based off of that scripture right there, y'all tell me if I'm lying. Y'all tell me, let me make sure, because I got to make sure y'all get this. Based off this scripture right here, it says the only option you have concerning that is to love one and hate the other. Right or wrong? Right. It did not say that you can love one and like the other, Mm -hmm. did it? The only options it give is what? Y'all talk to me this morning. I don't want nobody no, muted unless no, you got background noise. It's a higher but respect it. But I need you talking. It says you're going to do what? Love or hate. Love or hate, right? Love or hate. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to, I love one, but I like the other. It says, no, you're going to love or hate. Okay. It says, and... It says, or else, after it says that, it says, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. So this is in reference to the two masters. He's either going to hold one and despise the other. To hold one, tell me what y'all think about when they say that. Tell me what you think about. Hmm? Keeping one in position. Keeping one, keeping it in, in your possession. Hold Keep it. Ho- okay, Sharika said keeping holding it. it. Keeping it in your possession. I think Yoda said something. What did you say? We keep you locked up. All right, keep you locked up. Okay, Candace, what were you saying? Yeah, to keep you from doing what's right. Okay, it says he will hold the one and despise the other. Now, when it's talking about in reference to hold, it means embracing. Yes. He will embrace the one. To hold something means that you have it locked. Think of when you give a hug, what do you do? You hold the person, right? Just let me hold you. Because what you're doing is, is you're transferring the love from your heart to that person. And the holding means that we're locked into each other. So he says, either he will hold the one and despise the other. So when I ask the question this morning to you of this, which one are you loving and which one are you hating? Which one are you holding and which one are you despising? Because that's the era we're about to go into. I'm going to hope y'all this morning, I'm telling you now. Then it says, you cannot. Don't it say cannot? Yes. Okay. It says you cannot. Meaning, when it says cannot, does that mean that it's even possible? No way. It means it's not even possible. It says you cannot serve God and mammon, right? Yes. So, in other words... When it talks about the two masters, what two masters is it talking about? Just gave it to you. God and mammon, right? And we know mammon is what? Money. So it says you cannot serve God and mammon. There's no way. Now, based off of us seeing this this morning, and seeing it in the full context of what it says, and based off of how we have been raised, 
and based off of how we have lived, who willing to admit and tell the truth that when you look at things, you really attempted to try to serve both of them. Yeah. And I'm yeah. talking about being honest. You've already been taught that you, money is the way that you're going to be able to move around. If you ain't got no money, you ain't got nothing. Mm-hmm. So but really, God is the source of everything. So it's like you're, you've been brought up the wrong way. Tradition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mean, um, all right. I need some more. I need to hear it. I need to hear who's willing to admit. You're not ashamed to admit it. It doesn't mean anything derogatory against you. It, it, it's some stuff we've been taught. Who's willing to admit that I have literally attempted to serve both of them? Mm-hmm. I have. Oh, no, I have. I do better now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe we all have because, and I tell you why. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we are, very few of us were taught to love God first. We had to learn to love God through some type of tragedy, through some type of situation. But think about it. You were taught as children to love money. Anytime you ask for something, even as a child, I have been guilty of saying to my grandchildren, you got some money, you need to get you a job. You know, although I may have been saying it in a teasing manner, I was still pushing the fact to them that you got to have some money. So I was literally teaching them to love money and to have this um, desire for money, you know, this overwhelming uh, ambition for money. Because what I was saying is, is it's going to take money. And so in doing that, I would push them to believe that money takes precedence over God. Do anybody understand me this morning? I was literally saying to them. Huh? I was just saying I can totally relate because, you know, the time I spent with my grandkids this week, you know, the first thing I did when they got ready to leave, he got some money to put in your pocket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guilty. So. I mean, we, we are enticing them to love money. Mm-hmm. In a sense. Mm-hmm. Every time we want to show reward or gratitude, we're going to always do it with money. With money. And it's, and money. so we're taught that. And what I'm saying to you, I'm not saying it to make anybody feel bad. Don't don't take it out of context. Because God is about to establish us in a right way because we're going to have the money. Amen. Point blank. But the money is Amen. not going to be our Lord. Amen. Money is money is a terrible master, but it's an awesome servant. Right. Hear me. It's a terrible master. So the Lord wants to move it from being our master to being our servant. Now, when you look at this in Matthew 6, verse 24, I need to show y'all something. Money is the only thing that is in equivalent to God. You see that? It says at the last part of the verse, you cannot what? Somebody tell me what it says. So who, what, what does it put in the same category with God? Money. 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 You have heard the saying, money make the what? But who really make it go round? So you see how we have put money in a position with God. Okay, so let me go a little bit further. Do you see what we are doing as a nation of people now? Mm-hmm. They are making decisions to open up things because of what? Money. Money. Because what they're saying is, listen to me, what they're saying is, money is what makes things happen for us, not God. The people of God are sitting still. I'm trying to get God's people. I wish somebody would hear me this morning. I'm trying to get God to help God's people to be a mouthpiece for God to say to his people, you better learn to be led out of your spirit rather than out of your pockets. Because 
the favor of God will take care of you. 